What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Real Life Fishing Podcast. I'm the host, Jimmy Easterling. And guys, we've we've got two episodes in uh, two weeks in a row after we went uh, a month, kind of a three-week period a month. And, you know, we were pretty consistent there. And and then, you know, classic, a lot of stuff happening in the old fishing world and uh, with me right now. And uh, we're going to get back on the schedule. i got a couple more lined up. I'm going to go kind of between the, the in-person uh, podcast and then through the online as well. Hopefully, you guys, y'all don't hear my little one back there. Can you see him? You see him back there? James, what's up? James got his bag of baits right now, okay? We got everybody in here. Can I have the bag? Just go to the bag. Don't make any noise. Thank you. Yep, yeah, there we go. I'll get them all out, all right? Yep, there you go. All right, cool. Look, what's that? Little biffle bug right there. For you guys that are watching, a little biffle bug action. What else we got down here, James? Got the mayor. Got the, oh, look at this dude. Look at this dude. These are hard to find sometimes. Anyway, guys, I don't know if you're listening. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. So, like I said, guys, we've got more podcasts coming up. I have more ideas with the podcast. This is episode 17. It's crazy to think we're at 17 episodes, and just my my vision with the podcast was just to give Arkansas anglers a chance to get on a platform and, you know, Arkansas people get to listen to them and know more about them, hear stories, and also my fans, um, people outside of the state from the YouTube that watch as well. Appreciate, thank every one of you guys for watching and listening. It means a lot. And uh, like I said, we're going to try to have more ideas with it. Uh, this one right here, guys, this episode well, was with Cole Lamb. Cole Lamb's a younger angler in the state. Uh, he's he's won a recent won his first big event as a solo angler, Mr. Bass, Greer's Ferry, the first derby of the year. Guys, this one for me is one of those where, like, I didn't know Cole. I've heard about Cole. Heard he's a good dude. I mean, I know, I heard he can catch fish, and I've seen it just from tournament results and pictures, right? Uh, but I never met Cole until the Classic. Uh, met, met Classic, there's a couple of them Wonder Boys. You know, the Mark and Talk Tech Wonder Boys like to hang around in, you know, groups and there's, there's a couple of them together, got to meet Cole. I wanted Cole on the podcast, and he kind of, you know, and then I guess I was kind of like, hey, just get let's get this get you on and get it going. So appreciate Cole being on. Uh, if any of you guys that are listening to know Cole, know he's a good dude, and he's really kind of down, down to earth, laid back. But, man, a lot of fishing knowledge there. This podcast went more on talking fishing than sometimes I want. Just a heads up, there's some juice shared here at times, and sometimes, I mean, we want to share juice, but, you know, I kind of don't want to share all the juice, right? I'm just kidding, you know, but I want it, but, but, but anyway, there's a lot of fishing talk in this one, not just the, there's the life stuff too with it, but guys, just giving you a heads up, some good fishing information about to be shared in this podcast. I just mentioned the Classic, I had a good time at the Classic, got to meet people, I mean, I had two or three guys even come up and say, hey man, I love your podcast, where have you been? And then I posted the Johnny one. I hadn't advertised it yet by the time I recorded this. I just kind of threw it up there and uh, had a couple messages, man. Appreciate it. They said they enjoyed it. We can have probably Johnny on a whole nother video again. My man James is quiet now. What do you got going down there, James? See them baits? Yeah, he got them baits going, okay? Also, what's up, guys? In other words, uh, I'm not going to go. The tournaments are all kicking off in Arkansas right now. There's a lot going on. My guiding and electronic lessons have been taken off. Um, I've been on the water so much. And if you're one of my uh, people I've been in the boat with, man, I appreciate you. And anybody else who's interested, go down the link description. Find my Jimmy Eastling Fishing Facebook. We can go more on that. Just send me a message. Uh, what else has been going on? I'm trying to think. Tournaments are about to kick back up. BPT's going to be at Dale Hollow. Kind of forgot where the elites are going to be. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. He's brought me all of these baits. You see it, guys? All of these baits. I know if you're listening right now, you're like, what is going on? But anyway, guys, also, before we get into this podcast, okay, let me go ahead and uh, share some of my, my my sponsors of it, okay, of the podcast, because i got to give them a recognition. Future Marine, they have three stores across the state, uh, Nashville, Hot Springs, Heber Springs. I cannot be in the position I'm in without the help and support of Future Marine. Third generation family business. They don't just do bass boats, guys pontoon boats they do everything in the boating world and they just i just said three stores across state they're now i believe they got that store in northwest arkansas it's not future but there's a store that is affiliated with them so also up there in rogers as well but pontoon boat world wakeboat world i know you guys at lake hamilton know about the future marine island they just got their ice cream back up and rolling and the next time i'm out there bass fishing lake hamilton i'm stopping at the future marine island and getting some of my ice cream, okay? Got that special ice cream. I just went Lob Lolly is what it's called. Lob Lolly ice cream. That's at an Arkansas company. Some good stuff. Also, guys, new sponsor, Generation 3 Tire and Auto. 
my man Brady Butler down there on Military Row. Brady is a third as well generation family mechanic. I'm all about working with family businesses, guys. So it was Brady, his dad, grandpa. They, you know, Brady and me have been friends forever. Brady was one of the guys I fished with early on, actually. And then, you know, I kind of just went crazy with it. And Brady, you know, life kind of happens, you know. I'm going to take Brady on a fishing trip soon. But, guys, one thing about the mechanic world, I don't know cars and motors, tires, like he does, and other mechanics as well. You, If you're listening, you probably have a mechanic you trust. Brady's one that I trust. And, guys, with that, like, I know people ask me about fishing lures, ask about reels, ask about boats. Mechanics are people you can trust. Brady's one that I put my hands in on trusting as well. Because like I said, I don't know much about it. Like I, said, I don't I don't know much about the cars. You know, I mean, I know I got a V8 motor. I got a four-speed. I know this and that, whatever, okay? Appreciate it, guys. Thank you all for listening to this part. Now, hey, let's go get into the podcast. Cole, man, appreciate you being on. And uh, I got to meet you at the Classic and uh, we got to talk a little bit, you and the and all y'all Wonder Boys, y'all y'all kind of somehow find a way to get together. Uh, how was your classic experience? I love the classic. That was actually the first one I've been to, and just walked around in the expo all day, talking to different people, talking to guys like you. That's fun, really fun to me, because I'm in it every day at work. So yeah, you got cool to see to some new branch out and go elsewhere and do it. Yeah, I got to see some new faces then. Um, that's what it was kind of like. So I got to work a booth. I know you got to there, got to work and do stuff. But then like that branching out, getting to talk with guys, people you don't know, people you kind of recognize. Like I've I've known you through tournaments. Uh, Matt Baker's talked about you, Cannon Harmon. And uh, so it was kind of cool to get to talk to you. But was there any like pros or anybody you got to hang out with kind of behind the scenes or, or talk some juice about? No, not really. Not really. Uh, Matt Baker, that was the closest one. I really talked to a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matt. Yeah, Matt. I talked to Matt earlier, and he called and asked a question about something. And Matt, you know, me and him were talking, and then he was, uh, I guess, he, you know, he was bringing up how he can't fish some tournaments because they're, they're banning the guides. And I was like, yeah, it happens, man, you know. But I think on that, I was going to ask you, because like in Texas, I know Sam Rayburn's a hot lake. You know, there's tournaments on it, you know. Some of those guides get banned, uh, and, and they are like 50-50 on it. They get upset, then they don't. But, like, my opinion is just make the the lake off limits for a week. Like, what's your thoughts on, like, that? What do you think would be fair, I guess? I think it off limits would be fair. And I mean, I don't. I just don't really like the whole banning people because they're catching them thing because I've always liked fishing against competition. Like, yeah, I'd rather go get last. And have 20 guys beat me in a tournament around here for 20 good guys. Then go yeah. win one against 10 people that, you know, 20 teams that aren't as good. I'd rather fish against good competition. So I don't really get that whole thing. Yeah, and where you're at up in Russellville, like Zach King, Brandon Lee, the Grace Brothers. I know there's, I mean, um, I'm looking at the other guy. Y'all got a bunch of hammers up there. Like, I'm looking at the dude in the aluminum boat right now. What's his name? The aluminum boat guy that kicks everybody's butt now. Uh, there's probably Wayne a few. Dixon. Wayne Dixon. So, there's a few up there. you probably rather win a Thursday nighter with all of those dudes showing up, though. I mean, that's just like you said. Yes. you you rather beat Zach Correct. and all them guys. Yes, way rather. Now, I don't beat them a lot, but I would rather beat them than some little tournament where they're not in it. Yeah, uh, Wayne, like, I don't know any of them guys, so if they're watching, whatever, cool. But, like, Wayne, uh, I used to, like, when I would get on Get 5, I saw his name, and he would, like, dominate Darnell in that area. And then, like, I saw him fish the other stuff, and he didn't do as good, and then it's, like, the last five years. I mean, that dude's won at Washita. He's cashed checks at, like, almost every, like, Greer's Ferry, DeGray. He's won some at Millwood. He's he's just got some natural fishing instinct, but a lot of y'all's guys up there like you, you catch fish in clear water. It's not just a, a river thing. A lot of that helped. I grew up on bull shells in Northport, so I kind of came down here to get used to fishing mud. That was one of my reasons. So I like clear water <laughs> just as much, probably. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I didn't. I kind of you kind of mentioned that you grew up that part of the woods. So like bull shoals, Norfolk. I'm just going to let everybody know, you grew up there without forward-facing sonar, and you caught fish without them in that clear water, didn't you? Yes. There. Uh, sometimes I think back to some of the days we had. What if we had live scope to see what was going on? Because, I mean, there was crazy days up there. Live scope would have been amazing to watch. 
hundred <laughs> percent. Like, like I know bull shows is different than like I met the gray in Washita a lot. It is those fish seem to get deeper. Like, I mean, like, is it because there's not much hybrids and stripers, or what is it with them lakes to why they get so deep, do you think? I don't really know, but it seems like they keep getting deeper and deeper. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of an ever-evolving thing, almost. <laughs> What's your biggest smallmouth? And it, uh, my biggest smallmouth is probably a five-and-a-half out of Northport. Gosh, that's a big fish. Yeah. And we that's actually, would you catch it? caught it on a clown jerk bait and we actually caught two others over five that week off the same point my dad caught the other two but wow wow i always told myself if i catch a five pound smallmouth i might mount it because i've not caught one over like three and a half um which I mean where i fished you know i've not been around them but like that's what i mean y'all caught three in a week wow makes me feel like i need to get up there and catch one maybe i might catch one at four i might not even touch a five pounder <laughs> That's the only three over five I've seen over there, so that was just kind of a rare deal. <laughs> what time of year was that? Was that the spring or the winter? That was March, probably. Right in the middle okay. of March, I think. Yeah, okay. So they probably could have been spawning. Yeah, they were close. They yeah, were, close. They were getting there. Close. So... Uh, the classic. This was your first classic. It was my first classic too. Were you there all three days, or did you just stay two or one day? I was there all three days. I didn't get to watch the last day weigh in. We picked up that boat from the Phoenix booth and really couldn't find anywhere to park it, so we just went back. <laughs> so kind of you're at the f- but. yeah. So you're at the Phoenix booth. Um, how like. Being a boat guy at the Classic, like, did you get a chance to actually sell boats? Or were there more showing? Because there's all these boats there, Bass Cat, Icon, and, like, I know I'm over here with baits, trying to teach people about the baits, whatever. How was it from, like, a boat perspective? I was really curious about that. I didn't know if deals were made or what. Like, how was that? Uh, no deals were really made, but kind of leading people into it. Like, we had a guy I talked to there that actually came and looked at one last what day i think he came friday last friday or something and looked at one and that, mm-hmm. there wasn't any deals made but there was a lot of lead men to it you know future yeah. stuff from it nice nice what what phoenix i mean you're in the phoenix i'm guessing i'm in a basket we sell basket oh you're in a basket oh you're in a basket that's right okay so what what basket are you in uh my personal boat's in ira and then uh-huh. uh uh I'm running a demo through the shop, which is a Caracal SDS, the new one. The new one. Oh, if, if I had to pick a bass cat to get, it'd be that one. But the price kind of, you know. It's yeah. pretty nice. <laughs> it's the first boat with the wider deck, isn't it? Like, it has a wide deck for bass uh, cat? The Puma SDS came before it, and then yeah. now they've got the uh, Caracal SDS, and it's pretty much the same width on the deck. It's a little shorter. I kind of mm-hmm. like the layout in it more than any bass cat that's ever been made. I mean, there's, yeah. there's not much to complain about with it. Yes, yeah, well, I have and that. Uh, fast, I, of course. Yeah, 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 they're fast. I have that P2, and, man, I love it. It was great for me and maybe one other person my size. Definitely fishing Millwood as much as I was on Millwood, but now being back on Washita to gray, bigger bodies of water, having people in the boat, I got to, eventually, something's got to give. Because, man, that, that deck's so skinny. And, I don't, you know, as much as we're up there looking on it, I've already fall, I've fallen in the lake a couple times at Millwood. And I, I fall, I've fallen i almost fallen in more. Like, I catch myself. or, But, I mean, I love the P2. But it, it, it can roll. It's a scary boat. I'm not going to lie. It is fast. Hey, that, hey, that Caracal, man, will be up for sale in about April or May. And I promise I haven't abused it. Yeah, yeah, if if yeah, if if future if future marine would have that thing, I would make it happen. <laughs> but but man, so hey, um Grizz Ferry, Mr. Bass, you had a big first win of the season. Uh and and me and you talking beforehand, you said that was your third event as a pro in the Mr. Bass. Was that you think that was correct or Yes, the year before I think I fished the first two and then on the third one my brother had a wedding, so I went to that instead. And okay. Just kind of didn't fish any of the rest of the year. So with this being your third one, and you won, how many other guys you think have done that? Oh, I'm sure there's a few. 
<laughs> I don't know for sure, but I'm sure there's a few that know. Oh, so that day, and and I, you know, I'm just going off of what I've heard you talk on the radio show with Big Sarge, um, and just me and you talking. Like, you practiced how many days again? Was it two days you got to practice or one? I practiced Thursday, and then I went back to work Friday, fished a tournament on Nordnell Saturday, and then went to Mr. Bass Sunday. So you only practiced one day, and there were dudes there like all week. Like I'm not going to say the anglers' names, but like I talked to anglers on their way there, and they're there like Wednesday, Thursday, and I'm here like, dude, what kind of job do you got? Like you know, I mean, I, I know I can be on the water, but like it still would be a loss at me because I wouldn't guide or whatever. Right. But like, uh, but like these dudes are out there practicing, so you got one day, and I guess it probably helped you because like weather came in what the night before. And just, I'll let you talk more into it, but it seemed like you kind of, and I know it's cliche, but like I like to say, like you fished the moment of the day. So you fished what happened. I'll let you kind of talk about that. Yeah, we actually talked a lot about that after the tournament, that maybe practicing one day helped me because I found a pretty good deal. I thought I could catch 12 to 14 on pretty quick of a morning. I, I thought it was good, and I started on it. And that cloudy, well, I caught them Thursday. It was sunny, and I was catching them deep in timber and then started that morning it was cloudy that rain had been warm for a couple days a lot warmer than the the air temperature and all that was a lot warmer than the water tail and that spot i pulled up to to catch them deep i was sitting there and those clouds had the fish spread out more nothing was you know packed in there like it was thursday Mm -hmm. and i could see just runoff like there's two runoffs and they were flowing good and i was like i can't I can't watch this anymore, so I trolled up to one, pulled out a crankbait, and caught four in a row out of it, and I was like, I, I know what I'm doing the rest of the day. Wow. <laughs> I just ran and run off the rest of the day. Just ran and run off, so just like I said, you're just fishing, fishing the, like I said, the day, fishing the deal. Now, on the runoff, how deep was like your boat most of the time? Were you getting up there like close to, where you catch them in the mouth, where the water was mixing, uh, and, and any details there, or did it even matter? So those first four I caught were on a uh, crankbait, but mm-hmm. I could see them on scope, and they weren't. I had to almost stop it in front of their face like a jerkbait to get them to yeah. it. So the next runoff I went to, I picked up a jerkbait, and right where the water mixed, I started right you know, right where I was throwing to the mix line. And yeah. I'd catch them right there on a jerkbait, and then when I'd get most of those runoffs would be sitting in like 10 foot starting out, 10 to 15 maybe. Mm-hmm. And then I'd catch everything I could see around that mix line. And then I'd get up there in the back of it with a big single Colorado spinnerbait. And that, that was probably the most enjoyable part of it all. The, they were eating the o- lake in the back of those. And you just see them come up and eat it. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's like today I got to go fish for a couple hours uh, before the podcast. And I got on that shallow swim bait bite. That's a spring deal, you know. And I was enjoying it so much because I've been dang, uh, I've been doing all these on the water lesson, offshore electronic stuff, and I've been catching them deep, doing you know that stuff. And I finally just got to go throw something down the bank and just boom, just get it hammered, you know. Now eventually I was watching it, you know, I was watching it eventually, and you know, just to, I was you know, and then I was seeing some fish out there in the middle, like on a rock deal. But man, I I, I was loving just like you're saying, just throwing that thing and reeling it through. So how'd you get you caught? Yeah, yeah. So you caught a big one though in this Greer's tournament, and now I was going to get to that. Like you've been known to catch big fish, but how big was that? A seven pounder at Greer's? I think it was seven fifty four or something. Yeah, so like a seven fifty four at Greer's is like probably harder than a nine pounder or ten pounder at Fork. I mean, I probably you know, I mean, that's a big fish for Greer's. It it kind of blew my mind. I didn't know it was a. I knew it was a seven. Well, yeah. I caught it, but I was like, I'm on Greer's, it can't be, and I just wrote it off as a five-pounder in my head. <laughs> you got up there to the scale and was, like, really happy then. Yeah, when I when I poured it in the tank, I was like, yeah, yeah, I think it is seven. Yeah, because you've caught a few before, so, like, I see your fish on the wall behind you, and, like I said, I've just, the pictures and hard, man, like, there's people that catch big fish and people that just fish and any tournament fishermen, but you're one of those guys that's, like, done well in tournaments but also catch big fish. Why? Do you think it's more of your fishing style or luck or, like, what is it to catching big fish, in your opinion? I think it's 
it's looking for that less obvious structure, you know, in a little yeah. bitty piece of wood instead of a big brush pile, or a rock instead of a rock pile, stuff like that. I try to kind of fish out of the way. I don't like to fish around people a lot, and I like to look for that that those little pieces of structure. And I don't, I've never, if, if I've looked back and I thought it's kind of weird before I look back to tournaments I win, and if I win one, I've got big bass too. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's uh, you just said some juice, and I've, I know, like, I do the YouTube thing, and I've talked about some things like you just said before, but like, you're right, like, about looking now, it's not easy, and a lot of people like won't stick no. to it, but like, I tell people, like, one day I might want to jump in the tournament scene. I know, like, Matt was asking, he's like, dude, when are you gonna do it? And I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I let me get these kids and figure it out, but like, um, if I do the tournaments, there's no way I'm an angler of the year guy or team of the year because I like shoot for the home run or not, you know. And like yeah. you just said, like looking for the different things, but you found a way to be consistent with it. I mean, so you're you're catching your fish and then going and finding the bigs. So you got you got something figured out. Well, they're just nowadays everybody's so good that yeah. just your normal really good spot isn't a good spot anymore because everybody finds it. So you yep. don't find that little stuff, or you're that's right. You're just bumper to bumper with somebody, basically. Yes, it was. Uh, it was. And I shared this, I think, on the podcast. I don't care, like, and who you know, but like, like this this last summer, I don't fish night much. I know you probably fish a lot at night, and some of y'all's friends. I only do like two, three, four night trips a year. But it was this last year, like, there's like a brush pile right there. It's it has it holds bigs in it throughout the day, and uh, I pull up there at night. I don't see anything, and I turn over here, like this way. And there's like, you know, two or three dots hanging around something. Throw that spinner bait, yeah. boom, seven. And I'm like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> you know. But even before though, like but even before live scope, I mean, like I always was a jig, cranking guy, and I think that deep crankbait, there are times like like, you know, you thought the fish were here, you throw, but then like you always made I always would make random cast and would catch one. And I guess now we're seeing it with the forward face and sonar. Yeah, and a lot of times before that, you know, before forward facing sonar, that random cast would win when you caught the biggest one of the day. Yes, and yeah, that, I true. I feel like that's happened a lot in my life while I'm on the water. Just do something <laughs> random and boom, big one. <laughs> what, uh, so, in Arkansas, I mean, I think, did you, I mean, what's your biggest bass in Arkansas? Uh, I didn't, we didn't get to weigh it, didn't have a scale or anything, but it was... We caught two six and a half that day. I mean, I had never seen one around yeah. then, but I knew these two were like six and a half, and it looked like you could put the six and a half inside of it. So we called it like wow. a nine or a ten, but I I would have really liked to wait it because it may have where, been eleven. I don't really know. Yeah, where where was that fish at? Uh. <laughs> okay, never mind. Cool, never mind. Yeah, never mind. All right, never mind. Little, cool, it's cool. A little late back where I'm from. It, okay, it no, you're cool. Have uh, big ones. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so I thought I've seen you with some fish at Millwood, though. Have you caught some bigs at Millwood, too? Uh, I caught an eight. Last year, me and Corey England went down there, and he caught. I caught an eight, and he caught a ten. Something. That was it. I don't remember what oh. the ounces were, but he caught a ten. That was it. Y'all went down there last year. So Millwood last year, I remember it because I, I was in the thick of editing. I just got back from OHIV. I was a little behind. It had that, like, 10-day period where the moon was perfect, it was warm, the lake was level, and, dude, like, people were catching fish. And then, like, I saw y'all's, like, 30-pound bag, and I was just over here sick to my stomach. I was like, man, like... Yeah. <laughs> y'all had, y'all was, had a day y'all never really forget. <laughs> Did y'all catch a lot that day or just big fish? We probably only caught 13 or 14 fish that day. Nearly every, uh -huh. every one of them though, was big, pretty much. We well, might have yeah. caught one that was a three pounder, but yeah, the three pounder. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah, yeah. Well, so it depends, man. Sometimes that place, like this last summer, the last two summers, that place has been tough. I mean, it. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like Millwood doesn't take boat pressure well because I've been down there to fish a lot of the old college tournaments we used to have, and your practice would be amazing and then once boats start to get running around on that place it was like shut off and it always took yeah. way way less to win. yes and that that that's true to it and that's what like some of the like the locals down there one in particular i learned from like he taught me that early 
and he had some sneaky stuff he would do just for tournaments, like to get his right. limit, and then maybe come back to try to get a big. Uh, but like it fished a lot better during the week than it did on the weekends. I'll say, I, I like to be out oh, there yeah. during the week. <laughs> That seems to be how it's went every time for me, a lot of the times. It's really good during the week, and when boats start running around, and I don't know if it's the noise, the weight, the boat yeah. wakes that mess it up, but something definitely messes with it a little. Yeah. So um, so the Greer's Ferry was a big win for you, a single. Any other big wins top of your head you can think of, like like a college or team wins? I mean, I know you and Baker like seem to take a lot of people's money, but any other wins that mean a lot to you? Not really, not lately. Uh, honestly, I haven't been fishing as many tournaments as I did in the past lately. I'm trying to get more things squared away in my life, so when it comes to tournament fishing, that you know, I don't have many worries. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. No. Are you? So uh, I, are you? Are you wanting to fish the? Are you wanting to like take that step up and fish the opens or Toyotas? Yes. Yes, I would. Sweet. Love to. Heck yeah, I think you do good at it too. So, good stuff. Would it be two yoders or just jump the gun? Yeah. <laughs> now, that I opens is jump the gun cool. and be be broke. So I want to get my life kind of going how I want it. Get comfortable yeah. to where I can go fish those and not worry if yeah. my house is. I'm gonna get kicked out of my house. <laughs> yes, and and there's so many stories of those dudes that go in debt by fishing that stuff. Like it's true. Like I mean, and it's uh. You hear even some of the guys that have made it, and, like, they're the few dudes that do, but, like, there's guys that, like, will go bankrupt. And I'm over here like, oh, yeah. man, no. no. I mean, you, you're in the you're in the world with Horizon Truck. Like, how many of those guys, you know, I mean, yeah, so you know about it. It's it's a job. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. That's from what I hear. And you're hearing a little more of that nowadays, and people are being a little more outspoken about it, but. Uh, yeah, so it's a throw everything away and jump the gun on it. I want to make sure I'm settled good and have it all yeah. figured out. Kind of. Yeah, no, that, that's the way to do it, I think, for sure. Now, uh, you've been fishing for a long time. Uh, you said your dad was a, was, was a part of it, I guess, you, so your dad was a fisherman. Let's just kind of talk about that. My grandpa, so I grew up on, my grandpa had a campground on White River. So okay. I was probably taking people trout fishing before I was I was probably still eating baby food, running up the river, taking people to catch trout. But so that's kind of where my fishing started with my grandpa. And then I got to where I figured out I could catch bluegill on the river instead of uh, trout. Then I got to figuring out there was big bass in the river, too. So I got to fishing for those. And then I figured out my dad had an old ranger that one of his friends had been borrowing for I don't know, 15 years, I didn't even know about it. And I was like, we got to get that back. So, Dad, after we got that boat back, Dad took me to the to Northport a lot. I mean, we'd go every chance we could in the summer for about a year or two, and then he just kind of let me fly on my own. Awesome. So how old were you when he just kind of let you go? I wasn't very old. I wouldn't say, I started fishing a lot on the lake for bass when I was probably 16. Yeah. But I didn't really start fishing tournaments till I was more around 18, 17 and a half, 18, somewhere right in there. And so you say tournaments like just the adult tournaments, like the Thursday nighters or like the high, was, was the high school trail something that started then? High school tournaments. Yeah. Okay. High school. So how'd the high school stuff go for you? Like was it enjoyable? You, I, guess, I guess you did pretty good end up in Arkansas Tech, but how'd it go? That's what hooked me on fishing for the rest of my life. We won the first two high school tournaments we fished, the first two tournaments we ever fished, and then we won a local tournament, me and Kristen Weaver and I, and I thought, this, this is easy. I was wrong. I was wrong, but that got yeah. me hooked quick. Yeah, so it's like, it like you walked in that casino and hit that blackjack table and was hooked. <laughs> yeah, that's all it was. It was just luck. <laughs> so, but I was hooked. Yeah, so that uh, that's why I asked about the high school stuff. So <clears throat> I know, like earlier, you said you're like early, you're like mid twenties. You know, I'm like I'm like early thirties. The high school fishing was not a thing in Arkansas. Um, and I'm gonna pa can y'all hear? Can you hear my kid right now? He's crying at the door. I don't know if y'all hear him. Can you hear him? Okay, okay, cool. I'm, yeah. So so when I was uh, high school fishing wasn't a thing. 
yet. It was in Louisiana, Texas. So, but we had junior bass. Okay, junior bass, you'd show up, jump in the boat with an adult, or you had a boat captain. Or what we eventually did is, I had a buddy with a boat, and we just show up and drive them, like no adults at all. So at first I'd show yeah. up, jump in a dude's boat, there'd be two of us in the boat, we each have a five fish limit. And then it became where my buddy got a boat, or like my, my wife now, but she was my girlfriend then, her dad had a boat, so like, he let us just take it out. Like, there'd be three of us in this boat. Like, dude, it was the wild, wild west of how, like, no boat captains. Like, we're out there at Lake Maumelle, and, and, like, dude, Brewer. Brewer was one of them. I know you've been to, you know, like, Brewer. We're fishing a tournament at Brewer, and it was windy, fronts coming through, spring. The Bassmaster Elites were at Darnell. They canceled their day, came to Brewer, and it was, like, five-foot waves. It was, the, it was the nastiest I've ever seen it. And we had the tournament. I remember driving across that lake at like 16 years old, not knowing what I'm doing. You know, just, not, I mean, yeah, yeah spear waves, you know, we're just three kids in the boat. And I think about this and be like, wow, like how did this go by? But we had great memories from it. Um, you know, good, good times. But like, it changed a lot. Like, you probably are thinking now, man, that would have been sweet if I could have drove my own boat and not had to worry about a captain. <laughs> Oh, it would have been nice. I'm sure my dad would have enjoyed it a little more too. <laughs> yeah, because being a captain's tough. Have you been a uh, you been a captain any for high school tournaments? Looking like being able to go back or 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 not? I have. Yep, I've, I've captained a few kids in high school tournaments, and it's uh, one of them came to tech afterwards. One of them he's yeah. still fishing a lot. He didn't end up going to college. He's working on the road, but I enjoyed it. You, yeah. you learn a lot of stuff from kids. You really do <laughs> yes. weird stuff. <laughs> yes. And, it, yes, and, like, I have, like, you know, I, I do the Nashville team now, and, like, the young kids, it's funny watching young kids in the boat compared to, like, a 17-year-old, uh, but them young kids, man, just seem like, and I taught, like, 8th graders, like, ninth graders, so I know, but, like, they just speak without thinking. Like, we might do that as adults, but, like, they really speak without thinking. And I just sit back and laugh, you know. And then to yep. watch them hit rods and kick rods off the boat it's yeah it's you never know what you're gonna get i've got a funny story about captain yeah, yeah. high school kids I won't, yeah let's I won't go their names, but, yeah uh it was the commissioner's cup when they they're in covid i think so yep. you could fish any lake you wanted mm -hmm. and we i took these two kids and one of them I thought was like a ninth grader. He ended up being a tech the next year. Uh, we patted him on here, Cody McIntyre. <laughs> oh, Cody! Yeah, the kid, the kid, Cody Mac. How about that? But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they're throwing. We're fishing bridge pilings, and they're throwing little swim baits, and they're they're catching them good all morning. And then it gets like noon, noon to three when like the bridge pilings, you know, shade line gets right, and they should start catching the bigger ones. And they start just locking them up but couldn't i mean they get three cranks in and they come off and i was like what's going on and cody mack picked up on quick and he looked and just casting throughout the day hitting the bridge pile and his hook had been in to the bait so cody mack took his pliers pulled the hook back out threw out there caught one another kid said hmm that's funny threw his swim back out the swim bait back out there and i said you can probably check yours too and he walked one up, three cranks, came off, brought it back in, and it was been in the same way. Wow. Yeah, that's a good teaching learning opportunity right there. Yep. So, well, uh, that didn't happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, y'all uh, had a good bag that day. Y'all ended up like, what, third or fourth? Uh, I think they got second. Second? Okay, I yeah, second. A, I think a team on Millwood beat them. By, <laughs> oh, I know. Not very much. Yeah, I don't know that that, that was a. Uh, <laughs> I was the boat captain of that team, so I know. Oh, I could. <laughs> yeah. well, then, why couldn't you let me have? <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, I, I had. On, I was on an inferior lake. <laughs> <laughs> no, if it was a five fish limit, we would have blew it away. But like you know, it was a length oh, limit. Yeah. It was a yeah, yeah. It was a it was a length limit, and I was worried about that because you know Millwood them fish were short, fat. But dude, that was crazy. So I had Cannon Harmon and uh, and Brody, his his partner Brody Jack. So Cannon, you know, because I had Cannon, I, I knew Cannon when he was like a baby eighth grader, you know, and I got to watch him growing up to you know what he is now. But uh, that tournament was fun. So 
yeah, we caught him good that day. I say we, they did. It was one of those days, though, to where, like, like you said earlier, like, y'all had a great day at Millwood. I probably have, like, I've had some good days. This one was one of the top, probably five best days on Millwood, but I didn't get to fish. I just got to watch. And I'm over here, like, like, they ate that day, but that was cool how they did that, but I knew, like, they they did the best they could with COVID. Like Washita, they had a lake, Norfolk, Millwood. Uh, I was worried about the lake south. It was uh, I don't know if it was Arling or Chico, but um, but like my thing was, I mean, we talked about it before on me and Cannon talking on the podcast. But like I had a pretty good summer down there, and Cannon's fished me a couple times down there. Him and Brody were gonna go down there with Brody's dad. Brody's dad's a police officer. Um, COVID's going on, so he all of a sudden was like needed and that week I didn't even go out there that was the first week I never I didn't go out because we had some stuff happen and uh came and called and got the you know the the com- the tournament director verifies like, hey, I came up in on the water whatever and ended up all right like we practiced we did you did y'all get to practice the day before I think there's like one day of practice like did y'all get to practice yeah or? I think I think we did for a little while I don't I don't really remember for sure. So like, like we were out there the day before for a little while. Yeah, so like that Friday, Cannon came down, we practiced, like I said, first time out there in a while. And I went off the history of hey, this time of year, because it was uh it was June. It was weird. But like, you know, it wasn't like May, but like I was like, hey, it's June, we're gonna catch him in the river. And like fourth place, like, was in the river. Like there's two other teams in the river that day. But like um we went to the river, I didn't like it. And, like, I just told him, like, it's 2 o'clock. And I'm like, dude, we got to get out there on the main lake. We went out there, boom, boom. And we didn't set. I set, I set on one of them, and it was like a five. And then Cannon throws in there, thump, thump. And I was like, no more setting the hook. And uh, <laughs> But, dude, the next day of the tournament, they moved. Like, that overcast claim in, a front kind of came in. I know we're, like, four hours away. But, like, that overcast, you know, it was just the weather. But those fish literally, like, moved from here to like down there, and when we found them, oh boy, it, it was uh, I would dude, they they lost probably twenty five pounds of fish on a frog that morning. I was up here making them. I was mad. I was like, guys, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like like your guys are with the with the hook. I mean, I was just missing them on a frog. I don't know what the deal was, but yeah, put that out there, Cannon. So, <laughs> <laughs> I I will say at the end of that day, our two biggest fish came on a bait the younger kid through that I would have never ever imagined throwing. Yeah. At those the fit we were trying to catch and it caught him. So it's just one of those things. I think I told him like, don't don't tie that on. It's not yeah. gonna work. And then it worked. <laughs> yeah. But, and so like like you said that like it's with the kids doing different things and learning like and there's a picture of Brody with this with this bait in the one of the fish's mouth, so I can say it. But he threw that frog with like that little like squiggly thing on it like not too like little uh like strands it was like a, a wire tail that swam and he tied that on and i was like i've never seen that before would you what do you you know and and i, I mean he he was confident in like second cast he set the hook and i'm like all right dude yeah you got it <laughs> with uh, them kids man so cool yeah that's cool you've been a boat captain that's what i've uh done it a few times it's fun man um Lately, though, with live scope coming into play, like, and I've had people get upset with me about it. I don't know, like, I was going to ask you if you've done it with live scope, like, lately. Like, there's some tournaments you can't run the trolling motor as boat captains. So what I do is stand right next to them, and, like, I'm coaching them up. Like, if we're out there fishing a rock spot, timber, whatever, I'm, like, talking the whole time. And at one of the tournaments, we had some people get upset about it, and I was like, they, they said I was running the trolling motor. I was like, no. I'm being a coach. I am, you know, talking him through, you know, kind of going through everything. Have, have you had that chance with any kids yet? I haven't. I actually had it on my boat when I was captaining them, but at that point uh, with it, it was more of just a yeah structure deal. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I, it was probably good. It was definitely good enough back then to pick out individual fish, but it was still yeah. more of a, a new thing to me. It was just, oh, there's the structure. There's some fish around it. Throw that way and just yeah. <laughs> it wasn't to the point where you were staring at it yet. 
Yes, yes, yeah. I'd, I'd uh, what point for you, if you don't mind sharing, what was that point where you kind of figured out the power of it then? Probably there was one winter on Dardanelle where me and one of my buddies just said, we're looking at it, we're throwing jerk baits, and we're figuring it out. And yeah. Of course, catching fish in muddy water on a river, live scoping with a jerk bait, gives me a lot of confidence. You can catch them in this muddy water and stuff like that, using it, and you know, uh-huh. it's pretty good stuff. And that was kind of when I really, like, yeah, I need to start staring at it more and paying attention to what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I first got it on my boat, um, I was still coaching football, and like, I, I didn't fish many tournaments, but I had a tournament down there on one of those hammer lakes, southwest Arkansas, and uh, against a bunch of dudes, and I got to practice. Like, we had a track meet Thursday night. I practiced four hours that morning, and I just got it on my boat, literally. And I'm out there watching it. I'm over here, you know. This is like 2021, maybe, like 2020-ish, 21, maybe. Yeah, so, yeah, it was early 2021. And I'm over here watching it, and I remember, like, flipping it a stump. I got the GoPro footage. Like, I'm all hunched over like uh, Gil. Like, oh, uh, what's the dude's name? Gil, I just went blank. Well, I hung out with the guy at the Classic. Uh, the young guy, Gil. You know, he's Drew all Gil. hunched over. Drew Gill. I mean, I, I swept bone with Drew Gill, so I can't even think of his name. But, like, I got GoPro footage of me, like, hunched over, flipping my Texas rig at this stump, and I caught a fish off of it. And I was like, dude, this is cool. And, like, that whole tournament, like, I'm up here hunched, doing it. And uh, then I go to Millwood with it the next week. I throw a big old one ounce weight in mats, watch it go through, and just see fish go to to the bait, and I catch them, and I'm like, dude, this is sweet. Then I just kind of stopped for a bit, you know. Summer came, and I was just like, you know, you said, throwing me, I'm throwing a big crankbait and doing my thing, and then yeah, I, you know, it finally when I when I went full time is when I was like, hey, I'm gonna sell out because I had a lot of time on the water, and but I was always mad at myself because I was like on it. Like, I just got it. I was over here doing yeah. it. Then I just kind of, whatever, just, you know, stopped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I went a long time mad at myself that I was looking at it. I can't <laughs> stop, don't do it. But, I mean, <laughs> you have to, and I'm le- you learn more and more every year. Like, I'd say in the past year, the biggest thing I'm learning is how good of a practice tool it is. Like, yeah, you really don't even have to throw it to see what size fish are living in an area. You just mm-hmm. drop the trail motor and look. If there's not big ones there, there's not big ones there. Yeah, and then, and the then it goes to like part of getting them to bite comes in. That's it. Yeah. So then it goes to like, because like I know a lot of people. People are different on practice, but like the times I've fished a few tournaments, like I'm not throwing at them the day before. Like it's seeing them, and like and sometimes like I like what I've done is like that. You could throw like a in the summer, like I might go throw a hair jig or something real quick. And if they come up, then yeah. I just reel it away. But um, but yeah, I know some people don't have. They just want to go catch them, like like. But you know, like the good anglers, like see them. All right, I'm gonna figure it out on game day how to catch these fish. And if they move, like you at Greer's, you adjusted to the conditions. There's runoff. It's the spring. Uh, yeah, let's go throw a spinner bay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. But I I did. I was watching a lot of those fish in a live scope, yeah, and it yeah. was, I've never. A three-quarter ounce spinnerbait, when a fish decides to eat one, they move quick. They come and get it. <laughs> yeah, that's, they don't mess with it. Yeah, they don't come up there and think about it. You know, they shoot to it, yeah. huh? <laughs> well, well, they were eating jerkbait just as good, but they follow the jerkbait a little. Yeah. They follow it, but they'd eventually they eventually bite, but you throw a spinnerbait, and they go... Phew. Yeah, they seen that jerkbait, man. They hadn't seen a spinnerbait much. Who throws a spinnerbait anymore? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did a lot. That's my I know, yeah. I know yeah. So, uh, Horizon Trike, you know, I know we talked about a little bit about it. So, how long, uh, you've been working there, how long, and like, how'd you get hooked up? And I'll let you just kind of share a little bit about them, because I know, like, like me with Futural, Futural has three stores, they do everything, but like, Horizon's kind of like sold out to the fishing, like, bass fishing industry. I'll kind of like, they got, y'all got the tackle store, y'all do all of that. Have pros with Horizon on their jerseys. So, kind of let you talk about that. Right. I actually started there about two years ago, and I I was actually going to go back to college and get my master's. So for that summer, I walked up there, and I think I told Aaron I'd mop the floor, whatever he needed me to do for the summer. And uh, he ended up just hiring me 
to be the salesman yeah. and just run other things. And uh, I didn't go back to get my master's, and I've been there since. So it was kind of a, I just walked in one day to see if they need somebody mop the floor or something, and awesome. here I am still there. But, awesome. Yeah, so, uh, Dale, go ahead, yeah. No, you got it. Go ahead. So, so like I said, you're selling stuff there. you got the tackle. Um, y'all don't just have, like, y'all have multiple brand bass boats. I mean, I, th- I just saw y'all picked up Falcon the other day. Are y'all selling Falcons now? Like, But it seems like y'all are, yes. like, bass fishing heavy. Yes. We, uh, we deal Bass Cat, Phoenix, uh, Blazer, Falcon, and Express. So Express it's quite a few. also. Quite a few in one dealership. So, any ones particular, like, do they sell even, or is, like, one, like, more popular than the other? Like, from what I've been hearing, the aluminum boats are selling right now, and just your thoughts, do you see that, or? We're really not seeing a lot of the big aluminum, like, bass boat style selling. We're seeing a lot of the 17, X-17, X-18, a few mm-hmm. X-19s, that stuff selling good, uh, Besides that, the number one selling thing is definitely probably Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah. Why? Well, like so, with Phoenix, I mean, you think it's because the BFLs maybe they got that bonus with the MLF, or is it just the the price with the? I mean, because they're all like all boats are good boats. That's what I tell people. Like they're all good boats. Um, I yeah, think bass. Yeah. Ca- I always thought bass catch unique because it's Mountain Home, like you know, and you know they're like people are making the boats that we might like kind of know you know what i'm saying like it's a family deal but is the phoenix you think selling because of the mlf though or or is there something you know I something else that, to it? that helps them a lot you know all every boat company kind of has their own model themselves bass cats more like a you know they build three four hundred boats a year they're not building near as many boats so they're not phoenix is kind of more geared towards selling a lot of boats but they're mm-hmm. good there's nothing wrong with phoenix they Plenty good on quality and everything. The ride's amazing, but that's more of their sales route. They're, they're trying to sell a lot of boats, and yeah. that BFL stuff, Toyota stuff, that sold a lot of boats for them. Yeah, I was about to say, because, like, I see those guys that get that bonus in the Toyota series and that, and I'm like, dude, that's huge. Sometimes it's as much as the oh, tournament. Yeah. And so, yeah, now me and more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, me and you know winning a BFL is not easy. Um, and so, like, there's that part, but if you're one of those guys that can, or anybody can, but like, you know what I'm saying, like, it's, in your mind, it's like, hey, I need to have, you know, to get that extra contingency, I guess. It makes sense. It definitely makes a yeah. lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, so, electronics, you, do you, too. yeah, no, they are, yeah, like, I've, I've you know, I've fished in them, uh, I've fished, we'll do with my electronic le- lessons lately, it's crazy, I've been in so many boats, I know I told you, but like, I, I uh, the other day, I finally got to use the Ultrex, the new Quest, and I loved it. It's my first one with that, but I've been in Icons, Bass Cat, Ranger, Falcon, everything. I've not been in a Blazer yet, um, but I've been in a lot of boats. But the other day, I finally got to use that new Quest, and I, I was impressed. I don't know if you fished in it. You mean you might have it on your boat for all I know, uh, but like it was pretty sweet. Like I was fired up about it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm getting one because I see the price and... I'm like, yeah, my Fortrex is still good. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with the Fortrex. <laughs> yeah. It's caught a lot of fish. That, that Fortrex <laughs> pedal when you're live scoping, that's as steady as it gets. Yes, I'm, I'm saying. So what, what do you got on your boat, Troll Motorize? I've got the Quest right now. Oh, you do? Okay, so you know that thing's sweet now. I mean, it, uh, I, I, it was, it's right now, I mean, my favorite I've been in lately. I've, I've act, one thing I've noticed the most about it, and well, there's been all this argument, you know, people throwing a fit about if live scope is scaring the fish, the noise of the live scope. Well, since I've had the quest on my boat, it seems like I've caught so many that followed it to the trolling motor or mm. catching fish. Like out here, you used to, I feel like you had to throw it one when it was 80, 90 foot out there with two. Now, I've caught a lot. Sense, like right under the troll motor, got a ton of greers like on the troll yeah. motor. And I noticed on, I think that MLF at Fleet Bend, a bunch of the guys with the new brushless troll motors were talking about how I've noticed that a lot. I think 
it was more your trolling motor and stuff scaring fish the whole time than it ever was last year. Yeah, so I agree with that. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I, so I hear on these podcasts of, like, the guys from the Tennessee River, um, Gunnersville, that whole realm, how they're like, you drop the live scope on that ledge, they run away. And I'm like, dude, that's a bunch of crap. Because down there, like, southwest Arkansas, those fish get pinged more and more, and they don't do it. But, like, I'd had fish come under the boat. This happened to me on the lake to where I caught fish, brought them to me, and I just quit touching the boat. They stayed under me, and they followed my boat with the wind. And, like, I was in 15 yeah. foot. And I'm like, I'm like, these fish are just using my boat as a shade line. But with, with what you said, I've been noticing it too. Jacob Wheeler, Canal, all the dudes winning right now have that quest. And mm -hmm. after the other day I was in it, that's what I told somebody. I was like, hey, this is the quietest one I've been in yet. And I know we're, we're probably about to sell a trolling motor to somebody listening. Uh, and we're not trying they to. They need one. But, I mean, yeah, but, but, so, but that thing, man, like... I noticed how quiet it was, and you brought it up. So yeah, that's pretty cool that you you've even you've seen because you've I used it one time. You've used it for this whole season, so you've seen the difference. Right. It, it's it was it's kind of funny to me it, all the argument about live scope and then to see that see what's happening. I'm like, yeah, I think it might have been the trolling motor the whole time. <laughs> and yeah, I agree. Like I said, I, I I was I was thinking people were talking about it as like a like a stir away, you know. Like just uh, like they're yeah. trying to just let people think that, but I really think they didn't know. And I remember like hearing Jacob Wheeler talk at a deal, and Jacob was saying like how, you know, just dropping your troll motor in loud messes with the fish, and then all the other things. And like, you know, after fishing down there Texas and them stain water lakes, and coming like to these clear water lakes now, like I am, do them fish can be twenty foot under the surface, and they see that splash and just phew come up, and I'm like wow, like that never. That didn't happen at Lake Fork, you know. <laughs> right. Well, I, I I I read a lot about bass fishing crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Study it. And I've read a lot of studies that talk about what noises scare bass, and like a pinging type noise, like you're yeah, just pinging. They're at, they're attracted to that, but like a loud thud, like you slam a rod box down hard, or stomp on the boat. That's what scares them. Uh -huh. I've read a lot of studies about that i don't know how true it is but it kind of makes sense yeah yeah I, I like it i might have to talk to you off the, on the phone a little bit more you might know yeah you like to study a little bit <laughs> so i had that yeah, underwater I, like ca I had underwater camera for a while uh with 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 my editing company or what i was doing and uh do what i learned with it real quick like them bass would come right up to it like just like you know yeah. like like fish they're like they're curious you know and you just drive that thing around, and they're just following it around, too. And them catfish and brim were not, though. They were all going the other way. Uh, but that was always cool to see how those dudes just didn't care. Like, they'd come up right there and check it out. Um, and that thing yeah, was loud heard, in the water. I've heard a lot of spear fishermen talk about how you just kind of people that scuba dive, you just ping a rock against the gun or something, just ping, ping, ping. And they'll just come from nowhere. So. I... I don't know much about spear fishing, but I know someone that does. Like I know now, I've been talking to him and doing some things, and he uh, he showed me some footage. I guess the spear fishing has a season to kill bass. Like I said, I don't know anything about it, but uh, he showed me some clips of them shooting bass at Washita, and it hurt me. Like, dude, it hurt. But like those yeah, dudes, like, oh, it hurt. Like, but it, it, but like what I learned from it was like they once again they they just come right up to you, and like. I wish, like, I don't know, like, I, after watching it, I was like, this needs to be a legal period. Like, this isn't hard. Like, those dudes come right up there just like, you know, it, it, it just, a deer doesn't come up to you, or a turkey, and a bass doesn't oh. jump in my boat. So, I didn't like it. I even, I was, I told the dude, I was like, dude, this is hurting me, man. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that poor fish, I mean, at least I can catch it and fillet it, you know, but you're going to just shoot it coming at you? <laughs> just shoot it? No, nope, yeah. I've never done it. I probably never will. Yeah, I won't either. So I, I've watched that. Oh man, it bothered. But uh, but man, dude, good deal. Like I said, dude, this is fifty minutes just flew by. So I know we kind of talked and we made this happen in one cut. But hey, I appreciate you being on. Any like thanks or anything you want to say before you get off? Oh, just thanks to Aaron of the Rising Truck and Marine. He lets me fish a lot. And thanks for you having me on the podcast. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. 
All right, guys, thank y'all for watching. If you have any questions, I always should I do this at the end, but I always should do this at the beginning. If you have any questions, throw it down there in the comments. Uh, and, man, appreciate you, Cole. And, guys, we'll see you on the next episode.